let's welcome back. She, I don't know which one of us is the Siskel and which one of us is the Ebert, but I think that we are the Siskel and Ebert of Autism Allies. Uh, she loves the movies and, and always has an epic uh, Oscar food. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to call it. Uh, I, it's amazing what she does with food with the Oscars. So let's, and she is also someone who is instrumental at Taka, uh, the Autism Community in Action. Let's bring her in here and she can tell us what her official title is there. Moira! Hi! <laughs> are you Siskel or are you Ebert? Who are you, you know, I don't know. Because I, okay. I, I took turns disagreeing with either one of them when they had their show. So, you know. Okay. All know. right. And I don't know either. Um, but tell us officially, what is your current title at Taka? Well, I am, I manage the database and I'm also the scholarship manager. So, um, yeah, so there are scholarships available, um, that are, uh, everything's on our Taka website, takanow.org. Um, and you were talking earlier about the mentors, that program is up there and, um, you have to watch a short little video in order to get the password for the, um, for the application form. And we also have a private Facebook group that is parent and caregiver only. And that has been really amazing. We've got amazing people running it. So talk about the people you trust to ask questions to. Mm -hmm. that, that's a go-to place for me as well. So amazing. Yeah, so a conference coming up. <laughs> yeah, you got you. I was just going to say you guys have a conference coming up and, and are, is it all online again or is it it is. It is. This April one is online and the, the one in October uh, will be in uh, Orange County and that will be in person. But yeah, the April one is a, our um, action, autism action uh, conference. And um, it's a different format. There's going to be a couple of uh, presentations and then kind of a workshop of take home action items because that's what we all need. We all need to focus on yep. what are our goals? What do we need to work towards? What do we need to learn about? So so, I always love that about a Taka conference because a lot of times you go to a conference and you get totally jazzed, but then you get home and you don't know what to do. You yeah. never leave a Taka conference that way. They always leave you with an action plan. So yeah. Yeah. Traven just put up the link in the comments for the conference. You guys should register. My dog wants to go. You can hear her barking. Um, <laughs> I know for all of the viewers that have done the conference before in the past, everybody, everybody will tell you that it's life changing. You should go. It's very like inexpensive and Moira is the person you have to talk to if you need uh, a scholarship. So yeah. Mm -hmm. how, do they want to know how to connect? Tell them again. Well, they can just go to the conference website, right? And that'll get them to yeah, the, go to the talk, talk has all that information. The Facebook group is also linked there. It's called talk of hope and help for autism, but it is linked on our, our website. You can just click right through to it. They're going to ask you a few questions because we do want to make sure it's parents and caregivers only because yeah. um, we want it to be a safe space. And um, and so that don't don't be put off by the a few questions, you know, and uh, uh, yeah, they'll let you in and you'll be able to post questions. So, Moira, I invited you here today because like me, you love the movies. Mm -hmm. um, and you've been doing a thing for years that I've been watching on Facebook. Tell them what you do with food in the Oscars. Cause it's, oh, I mean, yes. it's awesome. We try to have a dish or a cocktail, um, based on whatever the best picture, uh, nods are. And we were, I had a group of friends. We were doing that. The last one we did was right before everything shut down in uh, February of 2020. So it's been a while. I actually went to try to find some of my props cause I have a little, you know, clapboard and I have a little fake Oscar couldn't find them because the garage, everything's been shoved to the back. So, um, so yeah, so we try to get like, uh, 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 when we had, um, when Parasite was one of the best picture nods, we had some Korean food. And, uh, um, of course for, for the Irishman, I just put out a potato cause you know, <laughs> and, uh, and all, you know, we, we try to mix and match and have fun things for, um, Black Panther. I found a cocktail that, that kind of looked like the purple stuff that, that, uh, that was, uh, giving him the, the strength. So, you know, so we did, we did that kind of thing. I love it. I absolutely. And now are you, you're not doing it this year because of, because of everything with COVID or are you doing it a well, little bit? We were hoping that maybe this year we could start back up, but we're, we're going to be really cautious just because I, there's another wave in Europe that we're seeing. And I'm like, I want to see how that goes, you know, because yeah. we get it later. 
you know, I don't know. We're just being abundantly cautious, lots of immune issues. So yes. we want to be really super, super careful. Yeah. We, my, when I uh, started dating my husband, he was famous for having the Oscar party among our, among his friends. And, mm-hmm. and he would have these epic, epic parties, um, w- which is funny, like a bachelor, he would throw a party like a bachelor where he would have the quizzes printed up and that was it. No food, no drink. And you had to, and the guests brought everything. So then, then he married me and, you know, I'm like making the cupcakes that have the popcorn on top made out of marshmallows. Um, you know, insanity. Um, but we haven't been able to have our Oscar party for a couple of years and, and we're not this year either, but mm-hmm. I will tell people, if you want to participate in a quiz, the, the new agency that I'm with to, um, to write my reviews, they're holding an online quiz that you can enter and whoever gets the most wins a hundred dollars. You can't beat oh, that. Fine. So that's the Brader agency. And we'll make sure that we put, um, and, and you can see my reviews there too. But I've been posting my reviews on Facebook and uh, Moira and I noticed that we did not agree on a lot of things. <laughs> there, were, there were films that we did not share the same opinion and we felt that that was worthwhile to share. So uh, I, I said, Moira, you got to come on. We got to do an Oscar episode. So I've already wasted so much of our time. Should we wade right into the Best Picture nominees? I think we should because I, I think hopefully we'll make it through those because there's a yeah. lot. <laughs> well, it's 10 now, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, I'm a little mad. For me, there were two films that I thought should have been on the list mm-hmm. um, and a couple that shouldn't have been. Were there any that you were like, why wasn't this on the list? Ah, that's a good question. Um, I, you know, I don't think there was any that I felt what should, I know there's some that shouldn't be on this list in my opinion, but um <laughs> But yeah, I don't think there was any that I, I didn't, I didn't get to see as many as I usually would. So what were the ones you felt should have been on the list? Well, one of them I know for sure you did not like, but I really loved Tick, Tick, Boom. And, oh. um, and you were not a fan of that, if I, if my memory serves. Yes. Yeah. And, but the other one that I really feel like uh, is one of the best pictures of the year is Come On, Come On. I did not see that. I did not see that. Now, I, I just, somebody, I wouldn't have seen it except that somebody said to me, Shannon, I really need for you to see this and review it. And it's, um, Joaquin Phoenix and, oh. and it's, it's a little, it's, it's a hard movie. It's not an easy movie, but it is a movie that I just, when a movie changes the way I look at my life in the world and, and it's beautiful, it's black and white. Mm. Um, and it's just, I, I please watch it. And then tell me what you think. I will. Uh, really, really good. And Joaquin Phoenix is amazing in it, but it changed the way I look at parenting. Oh, for, wow. Forever. Forever. Wow. Um, and, yes. and, and then I made my husband watch it. And, and sometimes he's like a balancing influence. And he was crying so hard after he watched it that he couldn't breathe. So there we go. Come on, come on. I to see if anybody was nominated from that. No, was, nothing. It, like it was completely... Yeah. Shut out. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will check so, it out. I will there check you go. Out. Okay. But so let's wait into the ones that did get nominated. Where do you want to start, Moira? I, I have it alphabetically here. So Bell okay. is up first. And, All right. Let's yeah, go there. I saw, that. I saw that on St. Patty's Day, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's really <laughs> cool. All the, the Irish accents. Um, It, it was very familiar to me because for a time frame, I, I was in Scotland and I was around the same age. Um, and so the, the toys and the things they were talking about were, were similar. Um, and I thought it was very sentimental. I feel like, uh, Kenneth Branagh was wearing his heart on his sleeve. I love the black and white and color, the usage of that. I thought that was really, really cool and great cast, really great cast. And to see the, the troubles, if you will, the, uh, being shown, uh, through the eyes of a child and that, that incredible violence and senseless, you know, uh, of destruction to be seeing the, a, a family trying to thrive amongst that. That was, I enjoyed that. What about you? I mean, I liked it. I, I thought it was good. I, this was one of the films that I was, had the most a- anticipatory um, expectation around that I wanted this to be everything. 
Um, so I think I went in with expectations a little too hot. I did like it. I thought that the strongest um, thing in it was the the supporting cast. Um, mm-hmm. That I, I, you know, I mean, who doesn't love a good Judy Dench? Come on. Um, I, I just, and I thought anytime you got a kid actor, you got me, right? Because I, 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 when you got a good kid actor and they're doing well in a film, breaks my heart. So mm-hmm. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was a little sentimental um, that I, I wish that Kenneth Branagh had, had maybe pulled back a little bit um, from the sentimentality of it. Um, but I, I thought it was a beautiful film. I just didn't think it was quite best picture enough. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, you know, but I, 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 I said, I, I liked it. I wanted to love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the thing. A lot of things, uh, that you just, you kind of, if you go in with high expectations and that, that was one of the other films on this, I had really high expectations that did not get mad, but um, but actually one of my favorites is the next one. It's Coda. And I thought, I thought Coda was wonderful. And I love that it stands for a child of deaf adults, but it also means the concluding passage of a, of a piece of music, you know, and it was about her love of music and about family and about dealing with challenges, you know, mm-hmm. and, and what it means to be the sibling that doesn't have the, at least the defined challenge that the family did because the the whole family is deaf except for the young daughter and I just I just found it to be really wonderful a nice nice view into a complete family that that the disability was that was a challenge but it wasn't like oh you know it wasn't like sobbing about the disability it was about how do you move through the world and kind of what we do with each other as a family and how we lean lean on each other and sometimes make each other crazy. (laughs) Yes. And how, how in a family things, uh, people get accused of being selfish when they're being self full. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was a, that was a big theme. I love this too. Um, I am making the case for this to be best picture. I, 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 when I first saw it, it was like the week after it came out really early on because mm-hmm. I, I had heard about it beforehand and I wanted to see it. We are, we're big fans of lock and key. So Amelia Jones, who plays the lead in this is one of the characters in um, lock and key. So we wanted to celebrate that. And, and also I had heard that it was going to be um, these the deaf actors who are playing the deaf characters. And I wanted to support that. Mm -hmm. So early on, I was saying to people, stop what you're doing. You got to go watch this and nobody listened. And (laughs) and so when it won um, the best cast at the SAG Awards, I, I got so excited because a bunch of people went out and started watching it. And I loved how Apple doubled down on the advertising for it. Cause we know that part of it is exposure. Yep. Like who saw the films, you know, and, and what was the buzz that it got. Mm-hmm. And in, in the beginning when I saw it and I hadn't seen any other of the films in the field, didn't know what was going to be coming out. I watched it and it was, I, I, it touched my heart so completely and thoroughly yep. that it's that thing where, you know, your heart comes out of your body is beating in the film and you lose yep. track of who you are and where you are. Love it. It was yep. that for me. Mm-hmm. And Troy, the, uh, the dad, um, who's been winning all of the a- supporting actor awards. I, I thought I was, I thought my skin was going to peel off. His performance was so I'm epic. I'm going to get teared up. Just think, I watched it again the other night because I just loved it so much. And I kind of wanted to refresh my memory. And I can't even talk about that. That's the scene between him and his daughter. I just, oh, I, and I just, and it wasn't manipulative. It felt true. And I love that, you know, because sometimes you, you get a little manipulated by, um, by the, the, the music, the emotion the you know, a d- good director can kind of manipulate you. Oh. And this just felt very, oh. you know, and it, and it has a simple structure of the film. It's really, my daughter pointed out, it's kind of like a teenage, um, you know, romantic comedy structure in a way, but yeah. it's so much more, you know, yeah. it has so much depth to it. So yeah. And I'm, in the beginning, when I saw it, I was like, this is a great film. I really wasn't thinking of it as best picture because I had an expectation that there were going to be other things. But now that I've seen the entire field, 
I've yeah. cycled back to I'm making the case for Coda to be best picture because normally when I think of best picture, I think of like something that's epic. Right. Either either the, the cinematography is epic, the acting is epic, there's like something that's epic. And I think I think that there's enough in Coda. It's not cinema cin- epic cinematography. It isn't, no. mm-hmm. although it's beautiful. Um, but I think that there are enough other things in this that make it epic um, that I'm making the case for it. Yep. These kinds of films don't usually win Best Picture, so I know it's a reach, but... A, yeah, I know. But, and that's the th- that I'm glad it's at least included, and maybe that's a case for having the 10 um, yeah. slots, because at least then something gets lifted up that you, people will mac- maybe watch it. But I think it's got a chance, because I think there's enough other stuff that has issues, I think it's got a chance and I'm pulling for it. So. Okay. What's next, next? Next one is don't look up. Now yeah. I, I love a dark comedy. I love a satire. I love Meryl Streep. And I thought Jonah Hill was hilarious. And it, it wasn't just sarcastic and snarky. It was actually funny, but um, I loved how um, uh, Jennifer Lawrence kept fixating on uh, the snacks and how the one general had charged her. Um, I don't think this is a best picture level film, in my opinion. Um, I feel like it hit the, um, there's some films that just have great timing in terms of like the zeitgeist. And I feel like it hit that incredibly well. Um, and I think it validated kind of the, the sort of um, divide, you know, that people are feeling and that how ridiculous it kind of is because we all have this common interest but but yeah i don't think it should be and it actually had some humanity at the end which was which i like the final line but um but yeah you know i i don't know i what are your thoughts oh i hated this so bad <laughs> I, I hated this movie so badly and for for a bunch of reasons that you know i've seen people say that they hated it none of their reasons are my reasons i hated it because um and i use the word hate because I thought it had a great deal of potential. I Mm. thought the idea was great. I thought it was clever. I too like satire and dark dark comedy, but for me, this was way too soon. You said it's great timing. I thought it was the worst timing. Oh, okay. I I am not in a space where I want to make fun of people putting misinformation out into like, I can't, I cannot physically find that funny right now because I feel like we're still in the middle of it. Yeah. And, and the whole idea of we're poking fun of the fact that there's something in the sky and that people are standing there screaming, don't look up, don't look up. Mm. This is, this is not funny to me in any way, shape or form at all. But I also hated it because here we were an audience thirsting for something mm. at a point in the pandemic where we really needed something. And I remember when this came out, I was like, oh Thank goodness. It's, it's a cavalcade of stars. They all got together. This must be brilliant. And it was like, there was nobody on set to say to these actors, it was like they were acting all in their own movie. Everybody like pick the style that you want to be Jennifer Lawrence. You want to do this kind of acting and, and Kate Blanchett, you want to do this kind of acting. It all works because you're stars. I didn't think it worked. Mm. Um, and I just thought it was, I, I thought the, the attempt at comedy I'm, I'm in this phase where I, I, I want us all to come together as a group of people and we're not coming it's together so and, and there, there's all this misinformation. And I think making fun of people for having believed misinformation is perhaps not the way to bring us together. So I hated it. I want it to go away. Um, I did not think it should be nominated for best picture. I say ha to don't look up, but right. that's just me. That's <laughs> No, but I, I, I don't think it should have been on the best picture list, quite frankly. I agree I think, with you. I think it was something that, and I think a state of mind is a big deal about what state of mind you're in when you watch something, definitely. Yes, yes. And actually, next next film illustrates my family's all different states of mind. Um, Drive, Drive My Car, which is a three-hour movie, a three-hour movie. Um, and, uh, I actually really liked it. Um, my family, not so much, you know, and I, I thought, I think I was just right in the right frame of mind to be like, all right, I'm sitting down and I'm going to, I'm going to take this in. It's a very, I loved how there were so many different languages and that, Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. we're really not communicating, you know, even though no matter that, and like everybody was compartmentalized. It's really about grief and dealing with grief 
and how do you move forward in life? And um, my daughter even said, she goes, I feel like the, the two characters were like walking around like zombies. And I'm like, yeah, they are. Cause they're, they're grief stricken. You know, it made me wish I knew Uncle Vanya better because I felt like, in fact, I read some of Uncle Vanya afterwards because I felt like they're using Uncle Vanya. I mean, for those that haven't seen it, it's uh, an actor and his his he's had a tragic uh, start in his in his life. His and his wife lost a child and then his wife suddenly dies. And that's all within the first 30 minutes. And that's before the opening credits. Well, yeah, but yeah, 40 minutes in, they put in the opening credits and I went. Oh, okay. I guess we're really starting now. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I liked all the different, and I loved the fact that the one woman um, that spoke uh, Korean sign language, um, nobody knew. It was only her husband that knew what she was saying. But you, I don't know. She was the most wonderful character I felt in that in the film. What did you think? So uh, this was another one that I, all I talked about through the holidays with my husband, you know, we were, we were social distancing hard. Mm -hmm. So I was not going to the movie theater at all. And this one, nobody was streaming it and er all the buzz was good. And I said, I think it might be best picture. We got to go see this. And I, and so our very first back in the movie theater, I drugged them to see drive my car, my husband and my son. And we got there and the woman, when she gave us our ticket, she was like, you do know it's three hours. <laughs> and, and I thought we were all going to, we were like three hours. We should have been told to pack a snack. Um, <laughs> is there an intermission? Like three, three hours. What on earth? And of course, we're all theater people, and mm -hmm. and and we're all people who are very familiar with Chekhov and Uncle Vanya. So I knew that that was going to be a part of it because all my theater friends had posted about that. So I was excited about that. Um, but I did, and I knew a little bit about what the plot was about. But I think it. I think there's a lot in the movie that's important to watch. I think it's a movie that people are going to study for years to come. But mm -hmm. I think it is so indulgent. There were so many scenes of of the car in silence with, you know, looking out the front, looking out the back. At one point, you know, I said to my my family when we left, I was like, I get it. Life's a journey. You don't need to look back. Don't beat me to death with it. Get over. I yeah. mean, if you there was I don't know about you, but and there were probably only five people besides us in the movie theater. But there's one scene in the towards the you know, you're two hours and 45 minutes into this sucker. And there is one shot of the car mm -hmm. that is so long that mm -hmm. everyone in the audience and it's quiet and they're just showing the car and you hear like, you know, crickets chirping. Everyone in the theater burst out laughing because it was so oh. long. It was long. Oh. Mm. And I was like, did this director not watch this with an audience to go? There's no reason for it to be three hours. Let's just say that. There's a I lot agree. that's good in the movie. And if you love Chekhov and you love Uncle Vanya, you will get the intertwined stories and it's worth it for that. But I'm telling everybody, now it's available to stream. Stream it at home. Take breaks. There are three distinct acts. Mm -hmm. Take a break. Take an intermission between them. I think you'll enjoy it more. Yeah, and, I did and, not think it should be on Best Picture. I, you know, I I like it when a foreign film is included in Best Picture, just because we tend to be so American centric with the Oscars. So I like that, and I like that there were so many. I wish I kind of knew the choices of having somebody speak Japanese or Tagalog or you know or Mandarin. It's like that may have had a specificity that I don't know as a non non yeah. uh, mm -hmm. multilingual person, but. Um, but yeah, I think that there were, my daughter complained about how whenever anybody left the scene, you had to watch them leave the scene. And it's like, we know they're leaving, you know? <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. Move it along. Um, but I think that there were better foreign language films. Yeah. Yes. Actually, Flea. I don't know if you saw Flea. I did. Oh my God. That was amazing. So well, yes. I, agree. I just we're watched The Worst Person in the World the other day. Mm. Who loved that? Okay. And and the yak in the classroom, fantastic film. Okay, well I'll have to get those. Why they could drive my car? It was because it had good buzz. Somebody started a rumor, and we all I bought into it. No, yeah. I think it had some really amazing, powerful scenes and interesting and a lot of monologues. But I, which I I enjoy when they're done well. But but yeah, I think it was 
I was in the right frame of mind, but I think if I, yeah, I think any other day I might've been like very impatient with it. And I, I, I get that. So, um, all right. Our next one is Dune, which I read, I read the book. And so okay. and I saw the movie in the eighties and, um, was bitterly disappointed in the movie in the eighties, much as I love the people in it. Um, so I was just relieved that this was good. Um, yeah. and I think that, for other people that I know that had not read the book, they were like, oh, it was good, you know? So they weren't hating it, but they weren't, the, there's a layer there that we're not kind of getting um, for for the people that haven't read the book. But I'm hopeful that the next one, I don't know that this deserves to be, I think they, I don't think this deserves to be on Best Picture either, except it's a great accomplishment, you know? And that's, I think sometimes why things end up on the best picture list because yeah. it's like a big giant saga and they manage to to su successfully express at least the first half of the book so yeah. that's kind of why it's here and of course great cast as as ever you know <laughs> but and for me i never read the book i never saw the original movie um i, I just didn't I, and i knew only that people hated the original movie um, so, so that's all that I knew. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I kept saying, I can't believe how much I love this movie. I kept, this is such a good movie. Why do people hate this so much or not love it? Or I, I was like, I just love it. What I was told afterwards, which I think is probably significant, the people who loved it watched it at home with closed captioning, and the people who hated it told me they watched it in the movie theater and they didn't understand what was happening. What was going on? So oh. I make the case for watch it at home with closed captioning. I as well, yeah. Uh -huh. I totally thought that it should be up for best picture and was like, why? Why is there not more buzz behind this film? Because I thought I thought it was a ripping good yarn. Yeah. I understood what was happening. I I was like this I, I did I kept saying this is so good um, well, with surprise yeah and I actually I missed some of the fleshing out of some of the characters that I really like like uh, uh, Duncan Idaho and Lee Keens you know those are characters I know from the book and I'm hoping okay. there's going to be flashbacks for some characters and you know Gurney Halleck you know those are all like the nerdy science fiction-y thing that I was enjoying but so that's, I guess, why I wouldn't put it on Best Picture. But I, I maybe part two, I'll put on uh, maybe part there two. I'll put it in All right. Line. So and next, King Richard. Ah, now this this was a a very a very good feel good movie. I feel very wonderfully portrayed. I mean, Will Smith. Come on, we love Will Smith. Um, the the gal that played his wife, and I'm going to say uh, her name wrong. Anand Anand Ingenue. Ange oh, Ingenue. Ingenue. Right. That's there how I'm go. remembering it. Ingenue. Ingenue Ellis was amazing. And I'm so glad yes. she's been nominated for supporting actress. Yep. There were, it was really good. It was a really solid, this, you kind of knew that you're going to see this. Obviously we know who Venus and Serena Williams are. We know they're successful. So you're walking in knowing that. Um, and to see the, the, um, the family dynamic and then, you know, just the way that, that they plotted their, their success and how, and the struggles that they faced was, I thought it was, it was a good film. You know, what did you think? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And my whole thing was I was avoiding it because I do love Will Smith. And I, I kept saying, why on earth would you make a movie about Serena and Venus and make it about the dad? Like why in this day and age, mm -hmm. you have two of the most powerful women athletes. Why wouldn't you just tell their story? Why are you making about their dad? Then I started watching the movie and I was like, oh, okay. I totally get it. I, I, I hope that he gets the Oscar. I think he deserves it this time around. Mm -hmm. I thought the movie was really good. I thought the message is what elevated it to best picture. I did think that it belonged in best picture. And I, Mm -hmm. feel like for me, it was one of the best films out there because I thought it ticked all of the boxes for me. I thought it was heroic. Yep. I thought I learned something from it. I, I felt changed from watching it. And, and to understand all that these two young women went through mm -hmm. and why he pushed them the way he did and how he believed, it was epic for me. So yep. I... Super loved it. I'm telling everybody, make sure that you see it. It's one definitely not to be missed. Yep. I think that it it suffers from the same thing that Coda suffers from. That I think that it will that 
what is epic about it may not be epic enough for some people it's for it intimate. to be best. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah exactly. And I think that sometimes we get distracted by the epic aspect yep. of, in, in terms yep. of you, the people that vote. I don't get to vote. Um, but, uh, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought, I love the, the image of, of, uh, of Venus stepping onto the court with her, with her hair, the hair beads like armor. Like she yeah. was like, I love, I thought that was, that just gave me chills. And I was like, Ah, you know, so yeah, I think this, I hope it, I hope it wins because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be disappointed if it did, would not be disappointed if Coda won, but I, I don't know. I don't know who, I don't know who I'm going to predict, but the next one, talk about a film that you had a lot of uh, hope for and really, really wanted to like, um, Licorice Pizza. I didn't like it at all. And I'm so disappointed because I, I just... I, I went. I lived in the valley. I wore bell bottoms. I went through the, you know, the, the gas crisis, and I loved seeing the backdrops that I recognized in the valley. But it was like, oh, you know, I could not get over a twenty-five-year-old, and uh, and we're supposed to root for her to be with a fifteen-year-old. Thank um, you. No, no, I'm not rooting for this. Thank you. I, I, I couldn't get past that either. Yeah. Although. Can I say that Bradley Cooper in this is like, I, 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 if they it's just had made the whole movie of Bradley Cooper? They should have. I, I loved I loved his scenes. I thought he was fantastic. Every, but every male in the film, except for the one coworker she had at, uh, uh, was like infantile. They were all like really young, but then she was acting like the 15 year olds as well. And yeah. I was like, I don't understand it. And I actually, I didn't, I didn't like call me by your name either, but for the same reason, I'm like this, the power imbalance of age, it's not cool. You know, it's no, not, not at all. Oh, I'm just going to show you. It's like, no, it's creepy. You know, and I, I don't understand. I, a lot of reviews I write about it didn't even bring that up. I and know. I'm like, how can you not bring that? If it were a 25 year old man and a 15 year old girl, mm, yeah. I think I'd hope we'd have some problems with that. Although. Sometimes we don't seem to because there's older movies that, that do that. But yeah, I, I was really bummed out and I, I did. It felt directionless and it was there was a lot of running and it was cinematically interesting. But, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I thought the same thing about the running. I said it's going to be a drinking game now where every time somebody runs in the movie, you have to drink. Yeah. Um, and there, I thought there were redeeming factors. I, I felt that the the supporting cast. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The, the, the people in the supporting roles, some of the best acting I've seen all season long, but I, but I'm like you, I could not get past the premise that the film was based on and I, and it was a problem for me. So yeah. there yeah. you go. We yeah. got to move on. What's next? Nightmare Alley. Um, I actually really love this film. I know that it's, I think this was one you didn't care for. I don't remember. Yeah. I loved it. I don't know that it's, I don't, I, I mean, uh del toro is such a visual gorgeous director and um gritty characters and all that uh and it was a greek tragedy in my opinion i feel like we saw from the beginning and then it was like okay you know so uh and i love bradley cooper so and then all the the people um playing opposite him i mean you know you had david strathairn who's always amazing to collect Willem Def- I mean, you know, Kate Blanchett, who's just made for the noir era. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know that it stuck with me as much as other films. Um, what is your opinion? I mean, I thought it had all the elements, but they did not come together to cohese. Um, it, it's beautiful. It's going to be studied for the lighting um, forever because it's apps. And, you know, that's what we expect from Del Toro. I thought you had this amazing um, cast, but nobody was given enough room or time to really have anything come to fruition. I think it was a a criminal waste of Tony Collette's time, William Defoe's time, and mm-hmm. and maybe even the case could be made for Clay- Kate Blanchett. I think that Bradley Cooper proved that he is a a character actor, not this kind of an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just I I feel like he's a little too vanilla when he's playing these kinds of roles. It just didn't. It did, I could, and it was predictable. I knew right where it was going to go, mm-hmm. and it and it felt very um, oh, like all these elements are here, and they just didn't get glued together in the right way for me. Right. So okay. it was disappointing. Yeah, I, right. yeah. I think I enjoyed it, but I think I I um, wouldn't have put it on Best Picture. I, I yeah, 
I felt like it could. I felt like it could be there because of the cinematography. Right. Well, and that's like you said. I feel like things have to come together, and that's another discussion for another day. What what makes the best picture? You know, and that's it's it's a difficult thing. So next one, I think, was the one you and I most disagreed on. Was there uh, we go. Here uh, we go. The power of the dog. Um, yeah. Now, which I'm calling the power of cummerbunds. <laughs> Do you have something against Benedict? <laughs> I, he's not my favorite. I I don't like him. Um, uh, I've liked some of the things that he's done, but he's not my favorite actor. I he, I kind of find him annoying. Um, and I don't need. Um, listen, I have nothing against um seeing beautiful naked men, but I but like that you can't base the whole movie on getting to see his, which I felt it did. <laughs> Okay. Um, but tell us why you loved it so that I, I can throw up a little in my mouth. I feel like it was about toxic masculinity. And I feel like that it, it was examining what it really means to be a man. And um, of course, there, the the image of a man is, uh, you know, the, the poster, the man on the horse and the cowboy, that mythic sort of image. And this was examining that and sort of the, the, um, the toxicity that can come from that kind of attitude and then also the thing you hate about yourself you're gonna project out to someone else you know and I think that he was so self-loathing about his feelings for this man that had been from his past that he just couldn't handle it and he was attacking it and he was so cruel to um everybody in the in the whole film so I I think you know I always suspect when people are really viciously homophobic, I'm always like, hmm, you know, what's going on there? You know, and um, so I, I just, I liked it visually. Um, and uh, and I thought the performances were really good. And, uh, but yeah, you had a very different opinion. I had a very big allergic reaction start to finish to this movie. Mm -hmm. um, look, it's beautiful. I, I don't think anybody could argue that it's beautiful, but the fact that they went to New Zealand to film a Montana I'm, I'm like, okay, uh, you know, that's your choice. Um, it was beautiful. There were too many, I felt indulgent. I, I, I said to my husband at one point, if I see one more extended shot of a fly on the, the rump of a horse, kill me now. I just don't enough, you know, um, I get it. You know, a bee can sting a bear. Got it. Message received, move on. Um, so I thought it was really indulgent, long protracted scenes where, where we were supposed to get the symbolism of it. Great. But way too long. I felt like she felt like we were all stupid and, and I'm not, but what, what set me off in the beginning is that, um, and I'm going to say it here. I haven't said it any place else. So spoiler alert here coming, but in the very beginning, we meet this character, this, this young man who his mother um, is this woman who is trying to cook for people and she's fallen on hard times and he's helping her. Mm -hmm. And they immediately at the start of the film, they show us stuff. So we get that he is a sensitive soul, mm -hmm. that he is someone who feels, you know, that, that he's a sensitive soul. He makes these flowers out of paper. Um, we see that, I mean, I think that most people watching it and it's set in the old West and, and, and you get a feel that this is not this masculine, as you were saying, um, kind of young man that perhaps this is uh, that he bats for another team. Right. Mm -hmm. I think you get that in the first two minutes of the film. But then in the first five minutes of the film, they send him outside and he begins to stim mm -hmm. with a comb. Mm -hmm. and, oh, he is, and, he, and he is doing a thing. He's doing a thing with a comb and he's doing it almost like it is a fidget spinner. And I turned to my husband and I said, oh, he's, he's on, you know, he's, he's a gay youth and he also is on our team. I mm -hmm. thought it, that it very quickly identified him as being someone who's on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. No one but me has come forward and said that. I'm the only person. I think if you watch it, you will agree with me that. And so from there on, that young man was someone that I'm going to feel differently about. I'm on his team. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and how he is portrayed is going to be important to me. And I'm going to take exception if we start delving into stereotypes. And I feel that the rest of the movie 
double mm-hmm. down hard on a stereotype that we fight against every single day as parents of neurodiverse individuals, mm-hmm. that people who are on the spectrum have no empathy, no emotions, and are cold-blooded. Mm-hmm. And so for that reason, and because it was indulgent, and because I didn't feel like there were, he was the only character that I felt any affinity with, and I I, I didn't like anybody. I didn't see how you could like the mother. Mm-hmm. Um, I could feel sorry for her. Exactly. I didn't like Cumberbund's character. I didn't, I, I, occasionally I felt bad for him because I feel like the reason why he was the way he was got revealed and it was like, he was taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't like the, the husband. I didn't like anybody. And I really hated the way it ended. It, like, yes, I'm incensed. I'm like, okay. burn the building down mad about what happened. Was it beautiful? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, did I feel like it was all built around, let's make sure that we have nudity from Cumberbun, (laughs) but ask me how I really feel Moira. Yeah, I know. Right. Well, I'm all for more male nudity because (laughs) that's always, we're under, talk about underrepresented, you know, (laughs) but I don't feel like going the other way is necessarily the answer. I'm not against nudity. I think the human form is beautiful. By everyone. you know. (laughs) And if it's part of the telling of the story. I did not yeah. think it was. I thought it was very indulgent. All of my gay friends are like, they believe that the movie is about gay power. Mm-hmm. And for them, I'm happy because mm-hmm. I don't think that that's what it was. And that's mm-hmm. not what I saw. But if that's what you saw and you loved it, yeah, fabulous. I, uh, I yeah, I, I don't know that it stayed with me as well as um, some of the other films we mentioned. But the last one's a big one and, and I'll be really brief. West Side Story. And I don't know if I can be brief about West Side Story. It's one of my favorite. The 1961 film is one of my favorites. And um, I was like hesitant, like, oh, God, don't, do we need to remake it? Do we need to remake it? Um, But then it was Spielberg. So I'm like, well, it'll be in good hands. Um, It uh, it was visually really beautiful. I mean, gosh, you know, it's Spielberg. I love the casting. I love that they, they, uh, they had a rainbow of people represented because it's like, a really wonderful thing and that it was um you know i don't know it it was interesting and there's always i've seen the broadway revival as well of west side story so there's always a choice of the order of some of the songs and i almost thought they were they had skipped i feel pretty for where they placed it in the film i went oh i guess i guess they're not doing i feel pretty you know and then i'm like they're doing it they're doing it here you know and it just it made no sense to me um, but I love the reimagining of cool and America yes. was spectacular, but I didn't feel the chemistry between the two leads. I, mm. I just, I didn't feel like they fell in love and I love Rita Moreno, but they gave her the biggest emotional moment and they kind of took it away from the young lovers. And I thought, mm. okay, you know, and I wept, I was, I was with it. I wept the, you know, but I, I start crying with the overture for that film. So you know, I'm not, you know, but I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if it, I don't know if it'll win best picture. Cause it's the kind of film that could, but what are your yeah. thoughts? Well, I thought surely this will be best picture. Then I saw it and I, I'm like you, I, I have a memory of the, the earlier film um, and what it meant to me as a young person. And I understand now um, in a different way, having seen everybody's discussion about this, that it's painful um, for a lot of people to look at the 1961 film and to see white actors who were made to look brown. Um, So a lot of people are like, how can you say that was so good? And I acknowledge that it's a childhood memory of the story when I, when I didn't have an awareness of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think what I arrived at is that maybe they shouldn't have made a remake because I felt like there were, there are so many wounds that you couldn't possibly heal all of the wounds to do a film that I think would have made everybody happy. And that Mm -hmm. in the doing it, there, there were good elements. It's certainly beautiful. And I thought that I, it's funny. I thought that cool was the, 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 the number. Um, but my husband also liked America. He was like, how could you not like that? And I, I, I felt like it was just too many long shots away far. And I, and I wanted to feel in it. 
Yes, um, yeah. But cool, cool. I felt in it, and I felt like it was when everything came together: the choreography, and the musical direction, and the sets, and the lighting. Because the lighting in this sucker, again, is amazing. Uh, yeah. um, but but I feel like it was so amazing that. For me, where it fell apart was the scene in the, you only have the scene in the gym and the balcony to convince me that these two people are be all, end all. I will sacrifice everything that I know and am to be with you. It's not enough time. It's a fault in the script, but it's what you've got and you've got to sell it. And I felt like they focused more on how it looked than how it felt. I didn't buy the balcony scene. I thought the I was hung up on the lighting. I was like, look at that gorgeous lighting. And if I'm looking at the lighting in your big love scene, you effed it up. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, yeah. And it, it, it I, yeah. I, um, I, one of the things, the original film, also had two different directors. One director, Jerome Robbins, was doing just the dance numbers and then Robert Wise did everything else. And and that kind of makes it an odd film in that way. But I did feel I kind of missed some of the dancing. And uh, my favorite number is in, you know, in the gym, the mambo, oh, there's an alarm. And we've going. gone late. I apologize. Oh, you probably no, have things to do. We did. That's all right. No, it's no, wor- no worries. But um. Uh, the the mambo number where they're kind of fighting and I I yeah. like those one gal got flicked over and almost you know hit a guy I'm like oh cool but then we kind of I don't know we seem to go away from it and I I didn't yeah I didn't feel in in it and that and then, exactly yeah, yeah so exactly so yeah, yeah and it, it I mean he opened it up to the whole street but I feel like he lost some of the intimacy you know in a yeah. weird but. Ah, it's a, it makes me cry. No matter what, it makes me cry. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I didn't really get there at the end um, because by that point I was so divorced from it. I also felt and took a lot of heat from this in my review that um, I felt like we, we centered so much on the backstory of the men that something was taken away from the women. Mm-hmm. And even though the, uh, even though I loved the, uh, I of course I can't think what her name is, the actress who keeps winning for everything, the the supporting actress who plays oh, and, Anita, and, and, I and, loved her performance, but yeah. I just felt like, you know, they should have doubled down a little bit on the women's stories. I didn't, I, I didn't feel feel like Maria that we got to know anything. Right. It was just they were shortchanged and all of it, and that we focused more on the men. Yeah. And I'm so over that. If you were going to redo it, could we, and, and I thought it was a slap, um, the way that the, the, the teensy tiny acknowledgement of the fact that there were black people living in New York city at that point, at the very beginning, I thought, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, I just felt that it was a slap. Mm-hmm. And, yes. and I, and I was like, if you were going to try to go there, Stephen, like you, you couldn't have like done something more than go, oh yeah. And I mean, it literally, in the mm-hmm. very opening, there is a scene where, uh, 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 like, just some people walk through the the middle of the opening scene, and and they kind of look at each other like, "What are you doing? This is my movie," and that is all that we see from black people in New York City at that time, and and I just thought, I don't like that. That yeah. didn't make me happy at all. I was like, if you're if you're, then why didn't you put some people in the film? Right. And. You know, if you're going to take license and put Rita Moreno and build a whole other story, then why didn't you build some other things in? Yeah. yeah, if yeah. You, you're going to be a purist, be purist. If you're not, then fix it. There are fix problems. It. Fix the problem. Exactly. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. I don't absolutely. think, I don't, I think it could win best picture and I think a whole lot of people will be mad. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that the other thing films we spoke of, and I think our top two are probably King Richard and Coda um, in terms of what we would like to see win, but I think that West Side Story or Power of the Dog might be the ones that people decide. Yeah, I know. I and I I I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe I don't know. Maybe though, it's hard to predict what what the people will vote for. And it's always yeah. like you're stuck with this collection of things that 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 the Academy has decided on. And now we're yes. like kind of parsing it between that. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a lot, lot like voting. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot like voting for politicians. Yeah. I'm afraid, I'm afraid that uh power of the Cumberbund is going to win. It just won at BAFTA. And when it does, you will hear me stomping, yelling and swearing because I think, I think that's bad 
on many different levels. Mm. I'm okay if she, you know, if it wins for cinematography, I, I guess I'm okay if she wins for director. Not really, but I'll take it because she's a woman. But other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, shove it directly into the ocean. But it's unfortunate that I'm not willing to state my opinion. I know, right? You're blocking. I don't feel free to say what I think. It is hot. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a anyway, <laughs> Moira, we are like, we went way over and we didn't even get to any of the other questions. Yeah. But, um, I adore you and I adore your opinions and, um, and I just thank you. You are somebody who has been so helpful to me in my journey. And, and I hope you know that I hope I've thanked you, but if I haven't, let me publicly say you are someone that I trust and respect and adore and that I I'm so thankful to, cause I know we would not be where we are had I not had your influence and your steady guidance. Thank so you thank you. Much. Well, I love that you're paying it forward and, and helping people get educated because it is overwhelming this process. Like you said, like even looking at that video of an assessment, it took you right back to that moment. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking I'm listening backstage going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember that. And it, it helps you know, what you do helps so many, so we many. We try, we try. But let's say again that if you want to know more about what Moira does, if you want to go to that conference, if you're looking for a scholarship, we want you to go to tacanow.org or uh, Traven is put on the screen if you're watching us as opposed to uh, listening, tacanow.org slash conferences slash autism hyphen action hyphen conference. Um, and you can go and find all, when is the conference? Because it's coming um, up, right? April 8th and 9th, but then you will have access to the, the recorded uh, sessions until the end of May. So, okay. yeah, so that's kind of good. So it's if you such can't a good do deal. the live portion is the better way to experience it, but, you know, people's lives get busy. So at least you'll yes. be able to watch some of the sessions, you know, uh, through the month. So. Well, yeah. you're an amazing person and thank you for all that you do for this community. I can't wait to see what wins. We'll, we'll talk next week. All right. Take all care. Right. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.